Hi, I'm Mark McNutt, and, and here we are in rainy Deadwood, Oregon, rainy again. And uh, just on the cusp as Aries is going into Taurus, and we're having a new moon, and a lot of exciting stuff is happening in the next few weeks. So uh, let me do my best to run down the big overview. I know that some of you uh, would just like to have the kind of like, a you know, the sound bite about each of the signs, but... Uh, that's not where I'm going. That's not what I do. What I do is uh, I encourage you all to get personal readings, which I think is the backbone of real astrology. And uh, what I do here is like an overview. And so the overview occurs at the new moon every month, 13 and a third times a year. And there's uh, we're about to go from Aries to Taurus. The new moon is technically in Aries, but boom, goes right into Taurus within hours. Um, and that's going to be Wednesday going into Thursday uh, 19th, going into the, the 420. And so, as it is every year. And so, this is really exciting because uh, Aries, uh, Aries is all about fire and energy and enthusiasm and so forth. And then Taurus is all about kind of grounding that with Earth. So what a great combination, getting enthused and then putting it somewhere. And that's the theme for now. Uh, we're blessed with still having Jupiter conjunct the Sun. Jupiter uh, has to do with uh, expansion, growth, broadening your horizons, opportunities. So this is a, a very opportune time that we're looking at right here. And like all things in astrology and why I don't like to do uh, readings just on Sun signs, there's a complicated uh, mixture going on here. So, so the paragraphs would be Jupiter conjunct the Sun, Sun and Moon going into Taurus, uh, Mercury going retrograde, everybody's favorite, and uh, there's a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. So uh, uh, we're just honing it down. We're not even going to talk about Pluto going retrograde or a few other things that are going on right now. We're just going to hone into the, the big picture and the overview. So, uh, let's start with uh, uh, New Moon. So, the New Moon is always a time of new beginnings, and we're getting the New Moon exactly at the tail end of Aries, but I would read it as the New Moon going into Taurus. Um, the cusp with Taurus is very strong. And, um, and so, uh, uh, Sun and Moon in moving into Taurus right at the time of a solar eclipse. I know that people are... They say two things about solar eclipses. One is like, uh, one is, can you see it? And the answer is no, uh, not on this side of the earth because it occurs at uh, midnight going into Thursday, at least at this Western time zone or 9, 13 p.m. on the East, uh, east Coast. And then, um, uh, so no, you can't see it. And that's why you're not hearing much press about it. Uh, and uh, the other category is around um is is around the other stuff supporting that the sun conjunct jupiter pluto being in square with all these things how is, does that affect you well uh people always want to have it broken down by sign and the only thing i can say in terms of specific signs is it's going to be really really good for the early earth signs so if you're born in the first week of taurus virgo capricorn should be really good for you over the next few weeks. Um, but if you're born at other times, um, all bets are off because it's a more complicated picture. Now, uh, as I mentioned, Jupiter, good luck, good fortune, uh, is still inspiring this time right now. And inspire means to put the fire in. It means the same as pyramid. And, uh, and so that word should give us, you know, a boost. That energy should give us a boost to jumpstart ourselves for the, the springtime that we're looking at right now. Hail, hail Persephone, hail the rising, hail, uh, hail um, you know, the resurrection, however you want to see it. It is the start of a new year, and astrologically, we embrace that as well. Um, so, uh, so uh, Aries moving into Taurus, there's the fire of Aries, is the enthusiasm. Taurus is the grounding, is like doing something with it. You know, um, uh, Aries starts the, the zodiac, 
and it's like gasoline in a match and it you know gets the ball rolling but then what happens all that fire energy what do you do with it if you don't contain it somehow it's not as useful like for example uh you know gas powered engines uh cars of the last hundred years have been uh you know working with uh little combustions little tiny explosions and you can use those explosions to move forward so we're having uh the influence of uh, moving into earth from fire. We're also having the influence right now, the, the enthusiasm and benefits of Jupiter. And then we're also having uh, Pluto uh, has just kind of licked at the heels of moving into uh, Aquarius just in time to go retrograde and back into uh, back into Capricorn uh, in the summer months. So Pluto has to do a transformation change, death and rebirth. And so Pluto, uh, where it is now, is going to inform this time with, uh, well, being very unstuck, moving energy, transformations. And we could go into our next phases kicking and screaming or trying to ignore that a lot of changes are going on now. Or we can embrace it and kind of use it as a, uh, as, as a motivational slide into the next, uh, the next chapter of our lives. So uh, Pluto's affecting things, uh, Jupiter's affecting things, and uh, the most important thing that people ever want to talk about with astrology is Mercury retrograde. Mercury's really powerful, you know, it's the winged messenger, so it's spinning around really quick. Um, and uh, most people are ruled by Mercury. Uh, in other words, if you're Gemini or Virgo, sun, moon, or rising, or uh, if you have Mercury conjunct the Sun, Moon, or Rising, and a lot of people, you know, maybe half of us have a conjunct the Sun. So the chances of being ruled by Mercury super high, right? Uh, in one way, shape, or form, or another. 80% um, of us are born with Mercury direct or moving forward. 20% of us are born with Mercury retrograde. It's like being left-handed. Um, so those of us who are... Um, who are Mercury-related, oh, and this is my lovely assistant, Caboodle. He likes to encourage me to do these readings. Um, anyway, he, and he's my number one fan. Um, he's about to have a birthday, too. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, when Mercury... Mer any planet going retrograde, uh, there's generally a lot of apprehension about that, particularly about uh, Mercury because Mercury has, uh, has, yeah, I know, you love this, don't you? Mercury has to do with the mind and communication and, and the rational part of our thinking. But there's other parts of our brain. There's, uh, if we don't work with uh, balance with the intuitive, um, we're kind of missing, a, you know, one of the flavors of the ice cream here, or a coconut bliss, if you will. Uh, Mercury, um, Mercury is really powerful with moving energy forward, but it's kind of like that old saying about you got to grow the economy. Well, it shouldn't be growing all the time. That's, that's a cancerous condition. Basically, we should be moving forward, then we integrate, then we move forward, then we integrate. And so I refer to any retrograde as the necessary exhale of that planet. Mercury moving backwards as it does, as seen from the Earth, and, and we're all here on Earth theoretically, um, Mercury retrograde means that the affairs of the mind are kind of coming undone. Now that affects your your videotaping and you know your sound card and your uh, your uh, cell phone and smartphone and and all your connections with the internet and your all your social life and things like that. So Mercury governs a lot of day to day um, uh, situations for us, and so that's why people have such a hard time with Mercury retrograde. But if you're born with Mercury retrograde, like some of us are, um, it's a really powerful time for moving forward. Now, if you're not born with Mercury retrograde, uh, it's, it's a reminder to integrate rather than just keep pushing forward. You know, so you can make all the mental plans in the world um, with the uh, present environment they may not go as planned. Why is that? Because we go into um, we go into you know the situation right now, the new moon, which which has to do with the whole new beginnings thing, and uh, Mercury 
is conjunct Uranus right now. The, one of the sayings in astrology is that Uranus is a higher octave of Mercury. And as a musician, I love that because uh, it really describes it, meaning that it's kind of a, a higher vibration of the same note. So Mercury is about mind and communication. Uranus, and it's not Uranus, sorry, it's just not. Mer uh, Uranus is about, um, yeah, isn't that good? Yeah, he loves this stuff. Anyway, uh, Uranus is about uh, uh, the un unusual, but it's very much about the workings of the higher mind. So every year you'll have Mercury conjunct Uranus for a few days, maybe. Uh, and, you know, if the retrogrades involved, you have, you know, uh, two times, you know, uh, where it's uh, conjunct. And Mercury conjunct Uranus is a very stimulating time for the mind. But Uranus rolls on its side, spins backwards in space. So uh, if a strong Uranus is involved, uh, things don't go as planned. So here we have a maximum, a maximum mental stimulating time and a time for new ideas, for inventions, for all kinds of uh, motivational breakthroughs. And yet at the same time, then Mercury is going to go retrograde. So if you're really good at, uh, you know, at juggling, at flying by the seat of your pants, at uh, dealing with uh, uh, things not going as planned, you'll do really well in the next few weeks. If you're really obsessed with, you know, making a list and carrying that thing out, point A, point B, point C, you could have a hard time coming up. Um, and the hard time is, is from the resistance to the challenges there. Um, because Mercury and Uranus both in Taurus, and so that implies, you know, real determination in there. So, uh, next few days, that would be, you know, the um, from here to through Earth Day, um, there's uh, going to be, basically, it's a time to kind of set intentions and to maybe make a mental list and that sort of thing. But don't be so attached to the list um, playing out in a methodical manner or things going as planned. If you saw you know, recent political things involving a former president or uh, involving the people being ousted uh, in Tennessee, you'll see that uh, the best laid plans backfired and, you know, flipped the energy. And that's what Uranus loves to do. He laughs at us. He laughs at us for our, our desire to be um, constant. And so, uh, so it's going to be kind of erratic in the next few weeks. Coupled with, this is ecliptoid weather, and uh, uh, eclipses come in pairs, and it doesn't matter whether you can see them or not. You know, first eclipse, solar eclipse, are happening at midnight. Um, lunar eclipse, uh, always 14 and a half days before or after, always. And, um, and so, well, this one's, a, the solar's at midnight, that means that the lunar's gonna be at noon. You can't see that either. So, um, so and that's on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but I imagine between now, when you get this, when you read this, hear it, uh, and uh, Cinco de Mayo, and maybe the day or two after, what's going to happen is a real topsy-turvying, but a powerful, powerful energy. So it's like, how can you, how can you harness the tsunami that we're going through? That's that's the essay question for now, and it's not a mental list. It is a a list of intention, and it's, so it can be a very, very, uh, very auspicious time right now, but but uh, but not logical. So very powerful energy in the air right now, and any eclipse time is like that. There's two eclipses, two pairs of eclipses every year, um, and we only hear about the ones that are visible. But whether or not they're visible, they really affect us. So that's uh, that's an important you know, a tribute there. Um, so Mercury comes out of retrograde right at that end point of that, uh, you know, right after Cinco de Mayo. And, uh, um, and it's all this is like conjuncting the North Node during that time, which makes a lot of sense because the nodes are how we predict eclipses. Um, so so it, it's a, basically a good time for planting the seeds and realizing that a lot of other stuff is going to come up with it and to use the discernment a little later to, to navigate that. Now everybody has a, uh, a different path 
with all this. As I mentioned, you know, earth signs um, should early earth signs should be getting a boost during this time. But on the other hand, earth signs generally tend to like to have make plans and carry them out. And that one's going to be really interesting. Um, and some of us never like to buckle down. We just like to, oh, see what happens. Um, well, if you just want to see what happens, then uh, you're not doing powerful intentions on, on cause and you're just working with the result. Not as good. Either way, either way, uh, this is a wonderful time to get, to get a reading and to, to maybe get a reading for your friends um, and to like us, um, like us at this particular uh, location on YouTube, Arius News on YouTube. Um, this is the nonprofit arm of, of what we do, but I like making a profit and Taurus is about money. So astrowizardry.com or astrowizardry at gmail is how you can find me. As an Aquarian Piscean cusp, I really love people. I love to dive deep with emotions and, and feeling. And so, um, so I encourage you at this time to, to be active, to be motivated, to be stimulated, to allow yourself to uh, move to the next phase. While, contradiction, don't go for the mental stimulation. Go deeper. Go to what's really going on under the surface there. And uh, so that's my pep talk for today. I want to encourage you to do the real meal deal. This is the introduction. This is an overview. Um, there's a special deal, in, deal going on for new clients. So, uh, so let's get in touch and let's, let's uh, go further with this and get very specific with where we're headed. Um, I like to help you with the map. So uh, your destination is your own. Wishing you well today and uh, happy, happy spring.